Hello everyone, Brian Gans right here again today and had a question come in on Facebook and the question was uh, regarding what, what basically to sum it up, what's the best breed of goat for this person to raise? They wanted to get out of boar goats, they wanted to keep their dapple buck and maybe get Kiko goats. Um, I would suggest, just my personal opinion, the, the proper question is not what's the best breed, what's the best goat that you could raise and that's the one if you're in the meat business that makes you money. I would suggest further that it has a lot less to do with breed and a lot more to do with how you manage the animals. Now you may start in a better position with a certain breed but it's basically going to come down to how you manage those animals. And here's what I mean by that. If you go buy 500 animals you need to be willing to go ahead and cull probably up to half of them just because people don't don't uh, typically raise big herds, um, you know, to actually be uh, judged on performance numbers. So you need to be able to cull your garbage and, and get to that point as soon as possible and not make excuses for animals that are going to bring your herd down. The next step that I would suggest is you need to have performance metrics that you're going to judge the herd by every one of them. Uh, for us, that happens to be we want a goat that by its uh, doe, that by its second year, weighs 100 pounds as a minimum. And we also want her to be able to raise 100% of her body weight by 180 days from kidding. So when those kids are 180 days, she should have, you know, if she's a 100 pound goat, she should raise two 50 pound kids at 180 days. And then you can make your culling decisions from there. You say you're going to cut, you know, 50 goats out of your herd, you take the bottom 50, you've got your numbers. Now the interesting thing about those metrics is it keeps us from getting goats that are really fat, consuming all kinds of food, just like old brown butt right over here, uh, that produce triplets one year, nothing the next year, and she probably aborted this year. A 190 pound goat, so she's obviously consuming a lot more food. Um, at the same time, we don't want uh, we don't want little dwarf goats, little Nigerian dwarf goats. We want to produce an amount of meat. So there's your other metric of having a, a bare minimum of 100 pounds. Now, after that, you've got your culling. Well, culling is going to be with you forever, but you've got your initial culling. You've got your does, that your breeding stock that are meeting your standards. You're obviously pulling out sires that meet your standards. As far as I'm concerned, from there, you need to go to line breeding keep that standard. If you outcross, you're bringing in more genetic material that is going to affect your standards. So for us, lion breeding is the way to get it done. So pretty simple math, you know, you just, you've got your initial culling, you got your performance metrics, and then you line breed it and you keep it going. And you don't make excuses for your favorite goat. You need to get over that and just cull whoever needs to be culled. Now, one person in the conversation suggested that a cross between Kiko goats and boar goats was the best solution because Kikos were so resistant to parasites and you know you got the weight gains out of the boars. Well I would suggest yeah Kikos are, are pretty resistant or were when we brought them into the country but it, it doesn't take too many generations of not culling and breeding for performance, statistic, uh, performance metrics before you've destroyed the benefit of any breed. So I, again I would just never chase a breed. You're not, you're not going to get what you're looking for. You want to chase the goat that's going to make you money. And as soon as you start keeping good records and understand the information that you want to track, you're going to be able to do so. Uh, so yeah, your, your boring Kiko cross might work great for a while, but if you're not culling the garbage out of that herd, you're going to genetically water those down. And Joel Saladin had a great point on this. He said, if you guys are all standing in here on crutches, I don't have any idea who's got the broken leg. And a big piece of that is if you're, you know, making excuses and, and, and deworming animals when, when they should be culled, uh, you know, you're, you're putting crutches under animals that should be going and you're passing those genetics on and you're just doing a disservice to yourself. To sum it all up, so that's just my opinion. You know, we've got boar crosses here. They are not purebred boars. They've got some Kiko, they've got some They've got all kinds of stuff in them, honestly. And we're working with the material we have to basically breed a line that performs for us. 
So I, I just can't stress it strongly enough. I wouldn't chase a breed. There's no magic answer breed out there. And you see that in a lot of different forms of livestock. People want to do it. But I hope this information helps you. God bless.